Afternoon guys, this is Matt from Amped Airsoft and I have Paul all the way from New York came out to help us do an Honest Guys overview of the GMR Gear mini map. Okay guys, so March of this year, Paul released the GMR mini map and this thing lit some hot fires on the internet. I even bought my, myself one, my Auscam one right here, a lot of guys at the shop bought them. They came in some of the most heinous camos I've ever seen, which was, it, that was so cool that, that you were able to pull that off. So Paul, mm -hmm. tell me what was the idea, idea behind this pack? Why did you do what you did? Um, I think it was really birthed out of necessity. Um, okay. Uh, I've been playing airsoft a long time and been very kind of hard on the type of gear that I would be using and what it needed to be to fit a certain role that I cool. kind of was really looking for. And um, you know, if you've seen, I know that you know, but uh, we had the original Eagle Industries yep. um, modular assault pack that's been around for decades. And kind of, I just always looking for something that was a little bit slimmer, a little bit, you know, rounded, a little bit more fine tuned to, um, you know, just certain specifications and uh, little features here and there that I wish that someone had really took the time to think about and really break down the understanding of what you could get out of a pack like this. Okay. And I guess that's where, um, you know, I kind of just took the little leap of faith and designed a completely new concept that was really just birthed around what I wanted for me. Perfect. And, you know, other people seem to like it and, um, you know, they're getting some benefit out of it too, and which that finds, you know, incredibly, you know, satisfying to me. Awesome. So let's go into one of the packs, like why did you do specifically what you did with some of these details? Um, Let's tear these guys down. Yeah, so if you kind of look at the base pack, um, tell, the, actually, tell us, tell us what they get when they get this in the mail. Okay, pretty much like this is one of the, this is the, uh, the M81, mm -hmm. that BDU, that realness. It's, the pack itself is size around, you can see it on like one of the new play carriers. This, this is, is on 6094. 694. This is on the JPC. Um, I really wanted it to be when it was on your vest and it would literally disappear. It would mm -hmm. become part of your profile. It would be like your little turtle shell. Um, I wanted the vest to almost like engulf the pack. It, it's sized in a certain certain kind of you know capacity that it's meant to hold certain things and it's not meant to hold others. Okay. Um, where for me, I'm, oh, I was always building gear from a perspective of what is the minimum amount of stuff that I can carry with the most maximum amount of potential. Okay. So um, that's kind of really what this was looking for. It's meant to hold like a 50 ounce bladder, a couple extra batteries, BBs, a couple radios, anything else you want to stuff in there, configure, maybe a soft shell, you know, some other emergency gear. It has the little pull out uh, medical kit that you can have. You know, some people will say, you know, the IFAC is too small. It's not an IFAC. It's really what it is. It's, no, a, that's it's a small first aid pouch. Like, you know, <clears throat> where people are saying, well, that's not enough to for a life-threatening injury. Well, hopefully you're not going to get in a life-threatening injury in an airsoft game. Where this, hopefully not. You know, this is really, for me, this is something that I wanted to suit for my needs. And we've actually had to use that a bunch of times, you know, even just some sterile bandages, gloves, yep. you know, some bleeding, a compression bandage. We've had to use that at, at games lately. And it's something that, you know, people with big IFACs, I'm like, do you have this? And they're like, you know, fumbling through the mm -hmm. gear work. One exactly. second, we got it right there. Yep. So um, what I'm doing with this is this is the bridge. Mm -hmm. I'm not a, a, a medical professional. So exactly. therefore, why am I carrying professional medical gear that I do not know how to employ exactly. to its utmost potential? This <clears> is helping you to get to someone who knows what they're doing better than I do. Exactly. That's why I carry mine. I, yep. I, know, I know the very minimum, minimum uh, first aid. But Anthony, you know, he's off camera right now. He knows like basic combat life saving skills. So I just carry extra equipment for him in case somebody gets tore up. Hopefully they don't. Yeah. They haven't so far, but we have it if we need it. Exactly. So what is on the inside of this bad boy? And, you know, what is kind of the access point? This, the, um, the bag is set up in a way that it's, um, 
internal is full Velcro so that you can put all of, you know other aftermarket different types of Velcro pouches. Mm -hmm. If you have you know a specific pouch that you like, um, you can put it on there and it's going to be stable. It's going to be not floating around in your bag. Cool. And I like to have it on the back side because when you um, if other companies put more pouches on the outside, it's just adding that layer upon layer where it's standing away from your body. It's it's throwing off your center of gravity where I want the pouches or certain you know that the heavier stuff to be close to my body. Cool. So when you're moving that side to side you don't get that that shake or that yeah. shimmy in your vest or anything. And that's like just that. that's just basic backpacking knowledge, yep. you know, that, that it, it really alleviates the pain and stress on your back because if you've worn a plate carrier heavy pack for a long extended period of time, it's not the most comfortable thing out yeah. there. So and, that's, and the, that's and the very distance, smart. As soon as you start putting pouches on pouches on pouches, it's mm -hmm. pushing away, and then all of a sudden you get that lean back, you know, or yep. this, this I want it to be as close, as slim as possible. Really, you know, and a good looking package was yeah, what very, I, very. I really kind of want to pay homage to what I love so much, the original Eagle Pack, so I kind of wanted it to make it look like that from first glance, but then as soon as you got close to it, you were like, well, this is something completely different. We, we, we've actually seen a couple guys when we started running these and selling them at events, a couple guys would come up and like, They'd start. They'd start just tearing through it, and they're yep. like, "Is this is this eagle? Because these things, besides the GMR tag on the inside, these are tagless. Yep. And they're just kind of tearing apart. And then they see that, and they're like, "Really? Yeah. So it, it's very it's very interesting because it does it does have it's an classic. Under, it's an understating style. Exactly. It has That's, the classic mini map style. It draws you in, but then mm -hmm. you really got to get up close to see what this thing can truly do. Exactly. So what else do they get? I know you get a divider and yep. some actual so accessories with this. You can actually customize it a little bit. Yep. So this is the divider that comes with the bag. Cool. Um, again, it's another layer of the uh, hook and loop that you can put inside the bag to hold your bladder back. And then also have another layer of Velcro that you can put more shit. If exactly. You know, people love pouches. So you can put all you want on there. And again, tighten this down. But this is also removable. It's going to come with the two compression straps. Personally, I, uh, if you look at my vest, I generally don't run the compression straps on mm -hmm. there because when I have the bag filled, it's sized correctly. There's nothing to compress. Exactly. Um, what I like about this pack too is like generally when it's on your bag, if it's full or it's not, it ma maintains that shape. Yeah. And it really doesn't look like, you know, floppy map, you know, back in the day, a lot of yeah. those bags that are... You've basically eliminated floppy map syndrome exactly. this pack because it does Where'd not hang over the base of your map pack. So we created you... floppy map syndrome and we are killing it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this is, uh, I really kind of like it. And um, the compression straps, which is really cool too, you can take them off. Well, also, since it has the uh, split open body pocket, yes. if you're going to run like bolt cutters, a 203, mm -hmm. 79, you have two different positions on the back to move these uh, slick clips to kind of retain whatever device that you're putting in there, yep. which is kind of nice. Also, what you can do is take the uh, compression straps off, and if you have a jacket or like another uh, an added layer, uh, I have this webbing at the bottom. You can run these clips through there and almost have roll your nice little pack. Uh, exactly. Up into like a, a slim little ball. I, sometimes I've done it with like a, a very small like shoulder ghillie suit, mm -hmm. and you can just clip it right there. It, Perfect. It's super, you know, and then you can take it off. You know, mm -hmm. it's very easy to get to. Yeah, you have plenty of mounting options on the outside. Like you said, to strap things on. You have two rows on the sides, both sides. So if you want to clip little pouches on there, you can do it. And then you obviously have the bottom mounted ones. Yep. It's obviously a Molly mounted pack. Yep. The um, the one that uh, this one has the new. Um, shoulder strap, something we can talk about in the future, but you know, it's it's meant for something. Really, I see this either as a bag that should be used to its potential on a plate carrier. Okay, that to me, it's filling its utility there. Perfect. Um, you can you know do a chest rig, you can do a freestanding like EDC bag and stuff like that. But really, when I thought of this, it was intended on your vest and to carry everything that you need in the tightest, most stylish pattern uh, form that you could probably get it. Perfect. So, uh, okay, yeah. guys. So, if you're watching this video on our YouTube channel, which hopefully you are, uh, we are Amped Airsoft, and we are known as you know the guys who run hose guns, you know HPA weapons. What does that mean? You have to carry a tank on your back, or if you if you don't run like an air stock setup, something of that nature. So, we've gotten this question almost daily. Yeah. Do these packs fit tanks? Yes, they do. So I have Kurt's actual personal tank that he runs. This is a 7745, it's a Ninja tank. This is a very common size that we sell. This is the pack that we have actually noticed fits in the GMR mini map. Mm -hmm. 
Got your regulator hanging out a little bit. This is an, actually an SLP. All you would have to do to make this completely flush and inside the pack is get your SLP turned upside down. You're good to go. Cool. I personally, I run a 9045 with an SLP and I just leave the regulator hanging out the top. I, it doesn't bother me all that much. Mm -hmm. Paul, what, what kind of stuff have you seen? Have you seen anybody out in your, your I guess, woods um, running tanks with these? Um, I, the ones that I've seen, I, I keep calling them like the nutsack tack, but I don't think that's the right. Oh, uh, those are the like the, the, the little 50, yeah, the tiny yes. little ones. Of course, those will fit. Those in there, and um, one of the dudes they had that they said it worked really good, and mm -hmm. they could still fit. You know, the bag completely closed, which, yep. which I kind of like. You know, uh, the reason why this bag is kind of angled in towards your body yes. when it closes up is so when you're crawling through a mouse hole or any other obstruction, you're not going to get something hooked on the back of your vest or something. Exactly. So that's why, you know, you're trying to be as as slim and uh, as snag-free as possible. Exactly. I don't know. You know, I think this, uh, the base platform, you know, if you're gonna run a tank or you're gonna run like, you know, a normal, what I would call a normal setup, you know, just- A non-air <laughs> setup. <laughs> non-air setup. Um, you know, it's, you can make it work. And yes, it's, got a, it's got a lot, of, a lot of value. I know that there's a lot of other um, people who are kind of coming into the small, modular pack market mm -hmm. you know it's it, i guess that w what that says to me is that what has been out there before hasn't filled what the need has been okay so, so you're, you're filling a gap you think has been there for quite some time i think so okay you know Perfect. i think that i think that's good like you know people are you know ask me like do you are you upset that people are making mini maps i'm like if anything, that means it's, it's just a vote of confidence that I'm going somewhere in the right direction. Exactly. So I and can, I mean, and we hey. can we can attest to that. Uh, we took his half of his first batch when these came out. They're out of stock, obviously, because these things moved. They very very popular pack, especially yeah. from a retailer's perspective. So, what is the next move for GMR gear? What um, is the next move for the mini map? Um, I actually, uh, this is the the Night Park one. This is one of kind of my. Uh, Let's pull it in the frame yeah. here a little bit because I know that they're they're fiending over that one. Uh, this is go. kind of like a one off, but this one I actually um, the next generation of mini maps which I'm working on right now. It's going to have cool. a couple slight improvements. I'm actually going to make two versions. Okay. One will kind of be the um, this very similar version one we'll call it, and okay. uh, with some uh, slight capacity changes, some things that I felt um, when you were using. A uh, certain uh, insert in there, just the bag, so that it has a little bit more user friendly ability to Perfect. access the certain pockets. And then I'm probably gonna do something which is like the deluxe package, uh -oh. which will be probably um, the bag that actually has set up a different way where the dividers actually be able to split into three. Okay. So you'll be get your standard divider, but you can break it and then you can actually make horizontal or vertical okay. compartments nice. in the bag and it's gonna be full Velcro lined. And um, it's going to be really set up centered around having a dual banger insert or the dual M4 Perfect. insert in there because it, it's set up in a certain way. It's the way that I think you get the most efficiency out of it. Generally, you, you'll see us. Why I like the bag is the guys, who, the crew that we run with, someone, when they have the bag, they're either going to have the dual M4, um, they're either going to run a smoke and a bang, or if we're playing just CQB only, it'll usually be just two of the frags. Perfect. Um, you know, maybe some do with the 79. It, for one person who has, you know, if the team has uniform setups, it allows each guy to be an individual, you mm -hmm. know, an added role of like who's carrying what, yep. which is, you know, it's it's a cool thing. I think I like it. Perfect. Okay, and then I know you actually mentioned this a little bit earlier. This is one of the new accessories. Yep. What, what can you tell me about the shoulder Pretty strap? Pretty much it's uh, the shoulder strap I want to do instead of doing like the dual book bag straps. Um, this one is going to be a, you know, a very similar sling bag that it's going to be able to kind of go across your chest and have a... Uh, a small uh, little clip in like this where you can Perfect. brighten. I found it this way is really nice because um, I like to go kind of jogging and you know do a lot of athletic stuff and this bag stays very stable. Okay. And um, when you want to access it you can just hit the one clip, pull the bag in front of you and with the J hooks you can access the main pocket of the bag. Perfect. You know this one I like to keep my wallet in here because it's the kind of the hidden mm -hmm. uh, zipper for uh, velcro closure and then um, you know just put it away and it's really, really stable. You know, man purses are Indiana Jones the new shit. The so, I mean, future. you know, the man purse, the camouflage uh, man purse. Yeah, it's kind of a well, it's real tree. So, I mean, it's the yeah. nameliest of camos. It's badass. I like, I like the mossy oak. It's pretty good. <laughs> and I, I guess that's why I wanted to do so many. Uh, the initial run, we did 16 different colors. Okay. And some some bags only made five of them. The mossy mm -hmm. oak only made five. The Ozcam, this I only had enough to make 10. Yeah, ten units. So um, it's it's it, it it drove a really cool Cause perspective no one, about it because everybody got no one's they got something it, unique. Exactly, they got something unique. You when you were in on it, I know it, the bag was not cheap.
Mm -hmm. But I felt what you were getting, the thought that went to this, the quality of the materials that I tried to source, the craftsmanship, I, I feel like I tried to give people their, their money's worth and something that I was just not like yeah. a, um, you know, I could have gone another way and made it, you know, a mass produced item. And, you know, it just, I don't think it would have been what it is. Exactly. And um, I, I, I'm trying to stay true to that. And, you know, hopefully, when I find new uh, cool colors or this fabric that I feel is, you know, something that people will like, I'll try to do that. So, um, you know, it's, it's an ever-changing thing. And as I use it more, I'm like, man, I wish I had done this. I'll try to throw that into the next bag. You know, mm -hmm. this is something where it's never going to be up. Oh, mini mat done. You know, it's always going to be changing. And hopefully in the future, this can be different. It may, it may not be this anymore mm -hmm. because I like what the way that I approach you know, airsoft and everything, always changing. It's got to evolve. Of course. You if you're not getting better, you're, you know, you're going backwards. Exactly. Uh, I, I appreciate you guys having hey. me out here. Thank you for coming you know, all the way from New York for a couple days. <laughs> yeah. Drank some beers, hung out. It was, uh, yeah, we, we shot some, some, some sick footage earlier. So this has been Matt, Paul, for an Honest Guys overview of the GMR mini map and some of the things coming out from them in the future. So stay tuned, guys. Make sure to follow us on all our stuff. Thank you.